the um, the mental uh, your your aql your um, mental well-being yeah your um, religion your wealth your health yeah and um, it's come to protect your lineage yeah now all of these things have a capital punishment on them so if you steal there's a capital punishment if you have uh, sex outside of marriage if you're married that is yeah. there's a capital punishment if you're not married there's lashing yeah um, if you leave for example your religion and become hostile there's a capital punishment yeah um, and there's a few other facts as well yeah so Islam has come to apply these capital punishments now why because you need to understand as human beings deterrent it's more of a deterrent than anything yeah, that's what I yeah, because in Islam, exactly, it's, it's a very strong deterrent. Why? Because these things cause mass destruction. You know, like America dropped hit atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, yeah? This called physical destruction till this day. We believe also there are spiritual destructions, mental destructions, physical destructions. So we know, for example, that, for example, if like somebody is drinking alcohol or doing drugs, yeah? So these things have a ripple effect on society. Now, having sex outside of marriage we know promiscuity there's STDs and the, one of the evidence from the like one of the uh, things the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him he told us that a time will come where promiscuity will be on such a level that there will be new diseases that will come out that nobody ever heard of monkeypox this that etc why because of going against God's legislation yes now I want to ask you a question yeah you know Frankie yeah okay you live in the UK. Yeah. We are both law-abiding citizens, right? You don't do anything dodgy at night, yeah? No. Okay, don't worry. So, we live under the rule of the United Kingdom. You have a passport. There are laws, uh, uh, laws and reg uh, reg uh, legislation, yes? So when you go past the speed camera, you can get a fine. If you try to resist arrest, you will get arrested. <laughs> so these things are in place, why? Because we are living under, under the law of the UK. Okay, we say this entire earth is the law of God Almighty and he's the one that calls the shots. So if I live in the UK and I have to abide by the laws, he doesn't want to be, guys, he doesn't, he doesn't want his face to be on camera, yeah? So, therefore, the question is very simple. If I have to abide by the law of the land, this planet earth and this universe is owned by God Almighty. He has every damn right to tell me what to do and what not to do. Hear it. If I can obey a man who's telling me, the Prime Minister, not to do this and this, and I have to listen to him while I get in trouble, why is it that when it comes to someone far supreme, God Almighty, why can we not listen to the same thing? Now, when it comes to theft, do you believe stealing is a good thing or a bad thing? Bad thing. Okay, good. Now, when it comes to stealing in Islam, it's not as simple as I went to the shop and I stole some lollipops and I'm going to get my hand chopped off. It doesn't work like that. There are the, 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 the fiqh behind, behind it, the fiqh means the understanding, Behind it is what? If I go to a house, I break that door open, I go inside the house, I'm trespassing now, yeah? And then I go to a safe and I break open the safe and I steal a specific amount of money, now you're in trouble. And if there are witnesses. So the matter is not as simple as I stole some tomatoes from the grocery and I'm going to get my hand cuff. It doesn't work like that. There's a threshold. How much you steal, what you do, yeah? So, there's a capital punishment for that, which is that your hand will be amputated. Why? Let me ask you a question. Do you know how many people steal in, in London? I know the figure's high, but... Very high. Why? Bro, some of them, the law even says you can't even stop them. Like, if they leave your premises, you cannot follow them, you cannot stop them. There's a limit. I think it's like three pounds. Exactly. So, what we're saying is, even in Islam, there is a threshold. If you go to a Rolex shop and steal, there is a capital punishment. Why? And this is where I believe Islam is the truth. Why? If you see a person's arm being amputated for stealing, do you think anybody will dare to steal? No. Good. So now we acknowledge a problem and we acknowledge the solution. Yeah? Okay. But how much more can I going to go? I'm going to end up here. Here, is this good? Yeah, stay there. Don't move. Okay. I love you for the sake of Allah. Sorry, we have our little disagreements, but we sorted them out. Now, the point is what? Islam gives a solution in the long run. What happens today is what? For example, Allah says in the Quran, فَإِنَّمَا الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّمَا الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَى With hardship comes ease, verily with hardship comes ease. Now, if with hardship comes ease, 
the opposite must be true, which is with ease comes good. You're already a Muslim. Repeat after me. I that no, I'm joking. <laughs> now, the hardship is what? Now, to cut somebody's hand off, is it gruesome? Okay, but the society that's going to be protected because of what they see, because any kind of capital punishment that is applied, Allah says, bring the group of the believers and they witness it. Now, in today's society, the liberal worldview will come and say to you, that is gruesome. How could you cut somebody's hand off? Blah, 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 blah. But this is the point. That one action can deter so many people. Imagine you're a hardworking man. You have your life savings. Somebody comes and steals it. That is the greatest injustice to you. So Islam deals with the root of the problem. It says prevention is better than cure. The Western system does what? Okay, you know, we'll give you a little slap in the wrist. Yeah, don't do that again. Next week he steals. Don't do that again. Next week he steals. Why? Because as human beings, we need something to be feared. So that's why when it comes to God's mercy, his mercy applies here. Why? Because when a man steals something of great value and his hand is amputated, the people who see that, the other gang members, whoever who we want to steal, they're going to like, you know what? Rolex or my hand? Which one's more valuable? If I said to you, I will give you 10 million pounds in your account, but I'm going to chop your hand. 50 billion pounds. A trillion pounds. Good. So your hand is more valuable than any kind of money. That's why anyone that's watching this will say, hold on a second, I'm not going to steal because my hand is valuable. A Rolex watch? I know, let me just go work, have a halal income, and I'll go buy myself a Rolex watch if I, when I make it. Good, that's number one. Number two, when it comes to adultery. So adultery works in two ways. There are those who commit, have sex outside of marriage and there are those who commit sex um, while being married. The capital punishment applied to the man and the woman. There is no difference, she's a woman, no, no, no. Both men and women apply the same. Now, is this something that Islam wants to do? No, because a woman came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. No, actually a man came. He came to the, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said the following. He said, I have committed adultery and I want the capital punishment. What's the capital punishment? Stoned to death. Gruesome. Okay. Now, check this out. The Prophet, you know what the Prophet did? When the man came, he moved away from him. The man came back to him and he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, I have committed adultery. The Prophet moved away from him. Three times. He came to him again and said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, I have committed adultery and I want the punishment. The Prophet moved off from him again. Do you know what the Prophet said? He said, are you sure you just didn't kiss her? The capital, you know why? This shows that Islam is not blood hungry. We're not, we're not looking for like blood, yeah, who can we stone to death today? No, we, do, we want to avoid it at all costs possible, right? So much so that a woman came to Umar ibn Khattab, the second Khalif of Islam, and she is pregnant. Bro, if a woman came here today and she's pregnant and she says, I'm a virgin, I'll say, sister, are you having a laugh with me? Are you having a laugh with me? And if a virgin, Mar Maryam, we can say miraculous. You're a virgin and you're pregnant. Hello? But in Islam, any kind of doubt, we take it. You know what she said? She said, oh, Amir al-Mu'minin, I am a heavy sleeper. One day I woke up and I saw, there's kids here, please move away. I saw semen on me. So, the Amir al-Mu'minin could have said, well, hold on a second, what kind of rubbish story is this? No, because he knows if he doesn't believe that story on the day of judgment, if she's right, he's accountable. He excused her. He said, no problem, okay. So, Islam is not looking to punish. Now, when it comes to adultery, promiscuity is something that destroys both men and women. Yeah, there was a study done that showed that a woman who has more than one sexual partner in the long run, this both men and women are affected, but the study show women affected more than a man. So her satisfaction in marriage goes from 80% to 20%. Why? Because for a variety of factors, whatever it may be, that and for a man also, it starts to affect the man as well. Do you get it? And you will see, for example, if today me and you were walking down the forest and we came across a fruit and this fruit was called Mumamba, let's call it Mumamba, I don't know what that means, yeah? And I got it and I said, mm, Frankie, try this. And you're like, wow, this is amazing. Now, me and you are happy with the fruit Mumamba, yeah? But then we go further down and somebody says to me, hey, this is the best Mumamba, you guys had the bad one. I'm like, let me try that. I try it, you try it, and you go, oh my God, this is better than the other one. Then I go across the road a bit more and then somebody says, forget what they gave you, I've got the best of the best. Now we have tasted three kinds of same fruit, which tastes better. Are we not going to start comparing? Yeah, you are. Are we going to be more satisfied or less satisfied? Comparing it to the others. Uh, less. Good. So in Islam, when, you, when there's promiscuity and you're sleeping around, you are internally 
harming yourself because you are now comparing oh but you remember i was with that woman in islam a woman a man can have more than one wife that's a different story yeah but for a woman she when she has intimacy they say that a woman releases a hormone called oxytocin which helps with pair bonding especially when a woman gives birth when she's sucking the child the oxytocin is released yeah she has a deeper connection when intimacy happens so when people have intimacy they think it's just oh just it doesn't work like that for a man maybe but for a woman she's having deeper connections now when it comes to adultery imagine you are married and you you are married yeah okay and then you come home and you find your wife cheating what would that do to you it will destroy you check this out recent there's a study showing this by the way do you know in america how many men there was a study done i can't remember the figures do you know how many of them found out that their child was not their child literally just imagine that the, 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 the woman the wife she was looking after them and this is why it's so catastrophic because now you are imagine you're looking after a child till they're 15 16 17 and somebody comes and says to you by the way brother these are not your kids do you get what i'm trying to say now that's the harm that it does to a person now imagine the harm it does to a society now you have today men who are deadbeat dads who are sleeping around with one two three four five six seven eight twenty women do you know what's happening he's having children from those women they are having kids and guess what their kids are dating each other incest why do you know why because they don't know one another islam has come to find a solution which is polygamy which is what if you're going to do it you do it the right way now that has a societal impact because now when these men are sleeping around with these women and leaving these kids the kids that are brought up in single mother households and i'll give some clarification i'm not blaming the single mothers because the mothers are the caretakers that's why the single mothers because of those households they are less more likely to commit crime sexual abuse sorry oh sorry uh, yeah no he doesn't want to be on, on camera they'll be more involved in crime end up in prison so do you see the impact that it has on society that's why islam is a capital punishment so it's deterrent the whole point is what deterrent and in order to carry the capital punishment in the history of islam i can count with my fingers how many times the capital punishment is applied why because it requires four witnesses imagine four people walking yeah they see the intimacy happen the pen go in the ink penetration literal penetration four just individuals have to see them having intercourse not she was on top he was no 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 did you see if there's kids please leave the building it's going to get peak okay did you see the penis penetrate the vagina if you didn't guess what happens to all of those four they all get whipped for slander a man came to the prophet muhammad and you know what he said he said and check this out guys yeah this is how you know islam is just some people come and say islam is a man's religion yeah a man comes to the prophet muhammad and says i saw my wife having sex with another man did the Prophet say, he's a man, we're going to take his word. Do you know what the Prophet said to him? He said, you, what you've said now is a slander and we're going to lash you for slander, 80 lashes. Now he's thinking, I just caught my wife and now the message of Allah, sorry, you're right. the message of Allah is now going to whip me. That's hurtful. God Almighty sends a verse down. And in the verse, Allah says that tell the man and his wife, they come into court and they take four oaths by Allah. Wallahi is a liar. Wallahi is a liar. So, they, so she's saying we take an oath by God that my husband is a liar and she said the same about the wife. And the fifth oath is what? You ask Allah's curse be upon you if I'm the liar. So now you're asking God's curse. You know what some of them say, the, the, the narration? It says that when it came to the woman's turn to ask the curse, to say may Allah's curse upon me, she stuttered. Now how do you think that's going to make people think? They're going to be like, whoa, hold on a second. But guess what? she ended up doing it nobody can say nothing so adultery is there to protect the community as a whole the other one when it comes to apostasy which is quite a common one yeah when it comes to the issue of apostasy islam in every country in this russia america china they have a right to protect the state islam is no different religion and state is one so if somebody is coming and causing corruption if somebody says, I want to leave Islam, we'll say, brother, Salaam Alaikum, we don't need you. Ya Allah Habibi, bye-bye. I'll give you, I'll buy your first ticket back to the West, wherever you want to go. Salaam Alaikum, bye-bye. Now, if that person comes and causes disorder in the land by coming publicly and saying, guys, Islam is false. Islam is this, this. 
Now you're in trouble. You're not allowed to do that. Why? Because Islam came to protect the religion, protect our souls. This person might misguide me. So Islam is a capital punishment. Yes? Why? You know Edward Snowden? Okay, Edward Snowden was somebody who used to work for the American government. He ended up leaking some files and he, he was, he was still going to arrest him for life, for treason. He ran to Russia. America implemented this. So the point is what? Islam is not exclusive in this matter. Every nation has a right to protect the citizens. If you don't like the religion, you can leave and go away. Bye bye. But if you're going to come in public and start cursing Islam, there is a capital punishment. And we are proud of that. So we've done adultery, we've done theft, we've done murder, yeah? And also highway robbery. Highway robbery in Surah Maida, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do you know what the punishment is? The person who does highway robbery, you cut the limbs on either side. Right arm, left leg. Left arm or right leg. And not only that, you crucify and hang them. I'll be honest with you, people watching this will be like, this is crazy. Brother, I'll be watching that with popcorn. Why? It might sound gruesome, you know why? Highway robbers, you know what that means? You and your wife are going holiday. Some car pulls up, boom, guns. Yeah, comes, slaps your wife, bang, shoots you in the leg, leg boom, takes all your wealth. Brother, that is the capital. I, would, I wish they would give me so I can apply the capital punishment. You are going peacefully in the land. Are they causing disruption in the land? Are they affecting your security and safety? Good. So Islam says there's four different punishments. The first one, if they stop you, argument sake, you're with your wife, give me your money. You give the money, I go. Your hand will be cut off if you're caught. We come and stop you. We don't take your money, we don't take anything, but that's what we do, we go, yeah? Then you will be prisoned or um, exiled. If we come and we steal and we kill, crucifixion. Do the people have the ability to be rehabilitated from doing something like that? Okay, now, we believe the best uh, rehab is the rehab for the ones that are gonna follow them. So, now if that person, because what they've done is a great crime, they've took the life, now, when you commit murder, which we said Islam came to protect the life, when you take somebody's life, Allah gives three options. Number one, an eye for an eye. Yeah, but who decides? The family. Have you guys seen in American courts when they give a punishment to somebody who's killed a child or somebody? And they say, yeah, 15 years or 10 years. Have you seen how the family go crazy? Yeah, and they say, this is justice. Take your justice to hell. The family is the one who's been wronged. They are the ones that should decide. So Allah says, look, number one, blood money. So we can ask for blood money. We want, you killed my son, no money can be whatever, yeah? But still, we want 50,000 pounds, yeah? Number two, an eye for an eye. We want him to be executed. Or Allah says what? And it is better. He went back to what? You said Allah is merciful, yeah? yeah. Allah says it's better if you forgive. There is like... Uh, of course, yeah. of course, of course. With these things, if the person that you're stealing from forgives you, you're forgiven. In certain aspects, you're not. But that's pertaining to life. So in a nutshell, all these things are stipulated. Why? To protect the communal rights in the long run. Because if you look into the Western system, promiscuity, do you know how many people have STDs in, in London? One million. One million people have STDs, bruv. You need to have a test. You know you have a test anytime you go for a date. Yeah, you need to make sure you got a test, bruv. Test everybody, bang, bang, test them. Yeah, one million people have STDs. Theft, robbery, murder, gang crime, knife crime, yeah? Bro, I'm telling you, these guys who go, I saw one video, it broke my heart, man. An innocent boy standing on the train, like uh, a train for a train. Some idiot comes to prove a point that he's a gangster, he's a waste man, stabs him. You know what you do to that guy, bro? You hang him upside down and you execute him. And all those other gang members who think they're bad boys. It's a big but what I'm saying is that's the thing. You, got, you guys want to be bad boys? This is what happened to your bad boy. Look, upside down, executed. Let's see how bad you are now. So the thing is, Islam has come to protect the communal rights. And guess what? Once you do that, less people will be robbed, less people will be dead. Yes, there'll be more serenity, peaceful in the land. But guess what the Western system does? Opposite. No, no, let them go, let them go, let them go. And what happens when I'm walking down the road? Road, get robbed. Next man gets stabbed. So the point is what, Frankie, the point is what? Do you not believe this is a better system? 
I know it's gruesome. Look, don't get don't, don't get twisted. I know it's gruesome. But remember the verse I told you in the Allah says in the Quran, with hardship comes ease. If we apply this hardship, the ease will follow in the long run. Tell me if I'm wrong. I do think I do think that's true, but I feel like that has to be universally applied for it to be. Of course, but that's the reason why Islam came for the whole entire world. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And this again, this is not this is the part of the Sharia. Rather, the Sharia is you being good to your neighbor. And ask the Muslims here, when is the last time you checked up on your neighbor? Wallahi, some of your neighbors, they are making, if they were Muslim, they'll make dua that Allah removes you from their house. How many of you guys checked on your neighbor? How many of you guys obey your mom, your dad? Today in the Western world, do you know how many people, you know these care workers, you know how many of them find elderly dead people in the house while their daughter and son is having holiday in Dubai? The Prophet said, may his face be rubbed in dust. May his face be rubbed in dust. May his face be rubbed in dust for the one whose parents reach old age and they abandon them. It's a massive crime. Your parents looked after you and changed your nappies when you was a little child. They grow old, what do you do? Care homes. Why? Because I've got a lifestyle to live. May Allah destroy your lifestyle. Anybody that turns their back on their parents, I'm telling you, if, even if he's a Muslim, I'm telling you, anybody who is evil to their parents, I swear to God, my friend, you are most likely going to visit hellfire. Are you going to go to heaven? Mm. But you're going to visit hellfire. It is great. Allah says in the Quran, after you worship me, you obedient to your parents, even if they're disbelievers. Even if they're disbelievers, you can't even say off to your mother. And then the Western world is saying Sharia, man, we, wallahi, you guys, if you are the Sharia, you are dying for Sharia, bruv. You're thirsty for Sharia. You're thirsty, bruv. Your lips are dry. If you had Sharia, wallahi, the serenity and the peace that we will have in these lands will be amazing. How are you supposed to practice Sharia as a Muslim in the UK? Look, uh, is it, is it I, I already do that. Number one, I pray. I try to pray. Yeah, I, give, I try to give my charity. I fast in Ramadan. I try to be good to my neighbors. I try to o obey my mama to the best of my ability. Do you get what I'm trying to say? This is Sharia. Do you get it? If I see evil, I try to stop it. Do you get it? If I see, like, do you get what I'm trying to say? The Sharia as a whole is holistic. It's not just, this capital punishment is just one aspect of it. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But even if you look at it, the conditions to meet these capital punishments are so hard, hard that in, in, in Islamic history, they have barely even applied it. In 1400 years, you can count on your fingers. So that's the reason why. So you have any other questions for Islam? Does this, does this answer your question? Do you have any other questions that you had a doubt about Islam or mainly? No, I just, I need to have some time for a No problem. Thank you, Frankie. It was a pleasure. Thanks for listening. Thank you. I really appreciate that you're sincere, man. But if you have any questions, I'm here every Sunday. Yeah. And yeah, look after yourself. Thank you. I'll just take the money. Thank you. Yeah.